create a just to create an exam. The easiest one is to go to a folder. In this case, let's click on exams. And we're going to hover over assessments and click on tests. Then in the next window, we're going to click on the button create. And this will take us to the setup for the test. In this case, we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it exam1. And we're going to just leave it like that. You can add descriptions or instructions later. We're going to click Submit. And that's going to take us straight to the canvas. Now from here, since we already have the pools done, we can go to Reuse Question. And we have three choices. We have a Create Question Set, Create Random Block, and Find Question. If you want to be uh, able to pick questions from a set, in this case from a particular pool, you can use question set. In the random blog, you can just choose to use a certain amount of questions. So if you don't mind what questions you put in there, you can use that one. And then if you want particular questions, you can go in here and click on find questions. We're going to go to create question set because that's the easiest one to use. So we do that. We get this new window. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so in here we're going to see that we have this side column and then we have all the questions here. If you notice, we, are, we have 1,339 items, which is 1,300 questions. That uh, it's including all of the pools. If you want to just go through specific pools, what we do is on this side, we're going to click on pools and we're going to deselect all pools. And this is going to get rid of all this. So now we can choose the pools that we want. Let's say we want to use exam one pool. So now you see that you have all these questions. Let's say that you want to add another one. Let's add exam 2. Now you have 50 questions. But notice that we have two pages here. So we don't have to go back and forth. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And we're going to edit the page in. In this case, we have 25 per page. We're going to change it to 50. So it'll, they will all fit in one page. So now we have all 50 questions in one page. So here, what we can do, we can start selecting questions that we want to use. And as we select them, they're going to turn into a, a, a yellowish color. And then you're going to see the counter at the bottom with the number of questions. So you can do that. If you want to use the whole set, you can just check the top box right here. And then everything will be checked. Uh, another thing that you can do here is uh, you can also find particular question types. In this case, they're all multiple choice, so it doesn't matter what we what we choose. We only have multiple choice. But if you had any fill in the blanks or true and false, you can also find those, and you can filter your results by the question type. In this case, you can also filter by exams. In this case, we only have we're only working on one exam, so there's nothing here to see. But if you had like a you know several exams you want to create a midterm or a final, you can actually use the exams to pull the questions. So once we have this here, we are done. So we're gonna click submit. And we're gonna go back to our canvas. Notice that we have these changes now, and it's gonna show us that. We have one question and it's 10 points. All right, so what why is that? Well, we have 50 questions to show. In this case, we chose all 50. But we only want to use, let's say, 20. So we, we click on the number, we change it to 20, we click Submit. 
and then automatically changes to 20 and they have the points too many points how do we change that well we go to points per question we click on the number and we can change that to two for example click submit and now we have this updated number of questions and the total points now you have this you can go back and create another question set so reuse question create question set and then we can choose to use again to select all pools and maybe let's use exam 3 in this case we're gonna just select a few questions here and we're gonna click submit and this got added after our first question set we have five questions we only have one again we're gonna change this to as many as you want in this case we're gonna say five we're gonna change these points to two points you can even do 2.5 if you want it so you can also see that the points are updated as well all right so that's how you create a test if you go back to the test manager you'll see that you have now an exam but now the, we need to do a couple more steps because the exam is not available to anybody so we have to make it available we have to deploy it that's what this column is for so how do we do that well we need to again come up with the folder that's going to contain all our exams in this case we're going to use the same folder exams so we're going to click on that one we're going to go to again assessments we click on test but this time instead of creating a test we already have one test created so we're going to select it from the list then we click submit and we go to the last step before this is available which are the options here you can add the description and instructions you can make sure that the test is available by clicking yes you can decide to make a new announcement if you want to if you check this you'll allow students to take multiple attempts and again depending on how you set up your exam you may want to have just one attempt or several you can change that you can change for com force completion which means that once the students begin the exam they have to finish it which can be problematic if they're taking the test somewhere else somewhere that there's that they don't have a good internet connection to work with for example if you're working on campus the internet connection is pretty good so you can select for them to finish in one sitting but if they're taking it at home or on the road if they get locked out of the exam they cannot go back in which means that you have to reset the exam for them and they lose all of their answers they have to start all over so for that we recommend not to check this especially if you're doing an exam off-site off campus you can set a timer in this case we, we said that it was an hour long exam so we said this one hour I want to make sure that auto submit is set to on that way when the hour comes the test shuts itself and it saves itself as well so if the students only completed 30 out of 35 questions they get graded on those 30 questions if you leave this off the exam is going to go on beyond the hour which you may not want to do that so it gets problematic on you know how long they take and if they're looking into their text or the notes whatever so it's easier just to leave this on and once the hour uh, is up then the exam closes and it saves all of their work uh, you can also set a time where you want this to be available either in a week or a few days or just whenever you want if you want to have this exam proctored by somebody else you can also set a password for example if you want them to go to a testing center to take the exam you will give the password to the proctor then we can just scroll down um, on the test feedback we recommend just to leave it as the score uh, don't give them the correct answers until the exam is over because you don't want them to pass them on to another student 
And then in the presentation, you can decide to show all the questions at once, one at a time, and you can even prohibit backtracking. And finally, you can randomize the questions. If you don't care about the order of where the questions are, then you can check this. But if you have a particular order for your questions, maybe chapter one, the beginning, chapter two later, etc., you can you can change that. And then once you're set up, you click submit and you are done. Then we have students that are ready to take their exam. They'll click on this exam and then they'll get an additional window with the instructions, the given time setting, the force completion, etc. And they can click on begin and they get started with the test. Another way, I mentioned that there's two ways to get to the to create an exam. We say that we can go through the exams and go to assessment, but also we can go to course tools here in the control panel. So click on course tools and then scroll down all the way to test surveys and pools. We click on that one. And we're going to click on test. Here in pools you have all the question pools that we created. And then if you click on tests, you're going to get to the same place that we were before. So we have our exam one. And you can go and click on build test to create your exam two and your exam three and so on. And the procedure for adding your exams will be the same, right? Go to the exams folder or your assignments whenever you have them, assessments, test, and then you'll, you should see your exams on this box right here. So you'll select your exam, click Submit, and go through the options. And to check on your grades, of course, you want to go to the Grade Center. In this case, we don't have any other grades. So you won't see anything here. But you'll see that Exam 1 is right here. And once they start answering the test and completing it, you'll see the grades in there. All right, hope this helps.